I'm Dan Upton, a consulting forester, and I had the privilege of working with Leland and uh, on his past forestry work here. And uh, we're here today to talk about some of the work that's been done in the past. And this beautiful stand behind us is a nice 70 year old Douglas fir stand with some native biodiversity that's filled in through the thinning process. And I thought maybe Lee, you could talk about the brief history of how this stand got to be like it is. Well, when I bought the place, I logged the dominant trees out till we run out of trees and that's what was left over. So by opening it up, you ended up getting the understory trees filling in. Yeah. And then with probably the added light that came in from the opening, yeah. you probably got a lot of this understory brush and mm -hmm. some maple. I yeah. see a couple of dogwoods once in a while. There's one see down there. Once in a while. So, yeah, so we ended up did, did you come back into the stand at all later? No. Did I you didn't make have a commercial time. thinning entry? Or? No, it was taking care of itself. So you just let it go? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was sort of an overstory release of a, you know, of a, a bunch of younger reprod is what it sort of sounds like. And it came in at a, a pretty good spacing and grew really well. And, you know, knowing, just letting it happen, watching it and saying it's going where it, where I wanted to go was good enough. That was um, a really key part of management is making decisions. You don't actually have to go out and cut anything down to be managing a piece yeah. of property. Yeah. You're looking at it and you're deciding, you know, gee, is this headed where I want? And it was, and yeah. so it didn't have to do anything else or if it's getting off the path and that's, that's when you have to do another action. Yeah. But yeah, you just sort of watched it, made sure it was going where you wanted. It did. It looks like it did pretty well. It looks like it did. <laughs> Took care of itself quite well. Kind of snuck up on me. So now we've moved over to a 20-year-old Douglas fir stand that Lee planted himself. And I'm going to let Lee talk about the history of it and, and the work that he's done here. And then we'll maybe talk about future plans in here. So Lee, you want to tell us what you did here? Well, mostly just pruning them and getting the limbs up higher. Well, you made a small clear cut here to yeah. start with to kind of clean it up. Clean it up. Yeah, it would had alder and, and Douglas fir and cedar mixed in here. So I cut, cut it and then replanted it to Douglas fir. And it's 20 years old, we think? Yeah. About 20? 20 years around that. So it filled in real well. Yeah. In fact, in a couple of spots, almost too well. Yeah. So <laughs> it has in places, yeah. Gets, yeah, it got a, kind of crowded. Yeah, I need to cut out some of the small ones. Yeah. But we can see that now because you've been busy pruning this. Yeah. And not everyone prunes as thoroughly as this. Why, why have you been pruning it? I want to get out and then keep keep the fire out of the crown if I got a fire in it, if mm -hmm. I can. And so how are you, you started early then, you started pruning them quite a while ago? Yeah, quite a while ago. And each year, two or three years, I go back through and try to get it higher, keep pushing it up. Have you, have you had any, uh Damage from sun scald? Not on this one. I have in past down by the house when I cut trees. Did you do anything to this stand to prevent sun scald? I leave the limbs on the southwest side to keep it from sun scald. You have to come in a certain distance or just the row, the, the trees that are exposed? Just the row along the edge. Just on the edge. So the edge yeah. row there, yeah. Yeah, good. It seems to work for me, I don't know. Well, it's amazing the amount of sun scald you can get on the south side, south you and can. west side. The south and west side, that's yeah. one of the uh, What do you think you're gonna do with this stand in the next 10 years? Oh, probably thin it before that. 
You're going to maybe you, come in, do an, an understory thin, kind of take the small stuff out? Yeah, cut that down. And Chop so it along up to about, deteriorate. about age 30, maybe a light commercial thin? Maybe if it stand it. Yeah. Well, you can definitely see the crop trees versus the non-crop trees. Yeah. So it gives you a good target. When we were looking at this stand before, you know, it's always, the thinning question is always a bit challenging for people, especially people who are newer to tree farming, don't have the eye for how a stand is growing and the developing yeah. as, as Leland does. And they, they don't always notice that a stand needs thinning until after after it should have been done. And so the two of you, I listened to you talking, picturing pretty clearly where you think this is going and what, what you might get, get to doing. And you know, if we look at this stand, it is a little bit thick, but we're also seeing a lot of separation happening. You know, they didn't all start exactly the same. So as they begin to compete, they're not competing on equal footing. And so, as you say, the crop trees are helping identify themselves. They're beating out some of the other ones, and uh, some of the losers are already losing pretty badly. And that, not everyone likes that, but the advantage is when you do come to do this thinning in eight years, you know, first yeah. and then the other one later, you'll have enough trees that have a good crown. They aren't all losing crown at the same rate. And so you're, the the winners are marking themselves out and you'll have probably a pretty good choice yeah. of, of long-term trees to leave and that's an advantage sometimes when when you get to that so yeah it's fun to see how you picture this growing yeah the brush this much brush small i mean I, he, you said you would grind them up if you could have but yeah. you know they melt down pretty fast here you yeah. cut them up and any of the things that you cut down if you cut them into little pieces on the west side, branches like that will rot away pretty quick. And it has some nutritional value. It's staying right here. Yeah, I think it does quite a bit. Uh, needles does more, I guess. Yeah. I think it does good. For them. I still yeah, do sometimes it. doing the right thing doesn't take any extra work, <laughs> does it? You just uh, leave it there and it does, it does good for it. Okay, we're standing in a 40-year-old Doug Fir plantation. Uh, Trees were purchased through state forestry and, and Lee and family planted this stand. It's now at the stage of uh, being eligible for commercial thinning. It was not pre-commercial thinned, it's just grown from day one to its present status. And in looking around, it's turned out, in my opinion, to be a pretty good stand at this age. Mm -hmm. um, there is some overcrowding, but a lot of it is uh, pretty well spaced, but there's still opportunity for removing uh, some commercial size trees. And Lee, you have a long history of commercial thinning, and you have in the past explained uh, some of the do's and don'ts, yeah. things to look for when you're doing that. And I wonder if you could just talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Well, it is a lot of, to get your roads in and and get your trees fell where you want them. And a lot of guys, when they thin, they, they get in there maybe a skitter and they'll pick the dumb logs fell off the ground, which you don't want to do. You want to leave them low so they'll turn easy. You pick them up, then they got to turn from the butt to is a machine and that's when you do most of your damage. Dan, I'm thinking this is also eligible for uh, cut to length of uh, mechanical harvest, isn't it? Yes, it is. The ground is not too steep. Um, it would be a matter of using the cut to length machine to develop corridors where they will take logs from either side uh, one of the nice features about cut to length is, as far as soil disturbance, all the slash and any brush that happens to be uh, in the understory goes in the skid road and helps with soil compaction, minimizing soil compaction. And they generally can reach out about, on average, 40 feet in either direction and directionally fell the tree. So it avoids 
the damage that Lee was talking the, about. A lot of the damage that Lee was talking about, both in falling in the wrong place, but also handling small, indi cutting them into smaller individual pieces for taking them out. Moving back to the stand composition, there is some hardwood scattered through here, primarily maple. Yeah. And we had talked about biodiversity in the past and wondered what your focus was, Lee, on any of the hardwood that's in here. Would it be something you'd take out or would you let it stay to action? Well, depends on what kind of spacing you get. I don't like to create a big hole up there and that's your wind gets in that. And oh yeah. You get wind damage to your other tree that you leave it. I'm looking at a maple right in front of me and it's almost columnar versus the, yeah. the normal pattern of where there are large round crowns taking mm -hmm. up a lot of space. And and they... So if you took out trees around it, that might become really a potential crop tree yeah. over time. Yeah, these are individual seedlings, so they have have pretty good form they haven't become wolf trees yeah. and you know as you're saying if you came and and you had a nicer maple than the fir beside it you could favor them without creating those holes whereas if yeah. you went out to kill every maple you saw you'd create holes that would actually work it against could. you and your fur it could so this stand is, has had a lift of pruning uh, looks like about six to eight feet. Would you continue pruning on the crop trees? Yeah, I would, and push some dead limbs off of it. So you're happy with this, how this is going? So far. You know, it's interesting to compare this stand with the one we visited earlier, the 20-year-old stand. Mm -hmm. And it would have been fun to have seen this one 20 years ago to know what it would look like today. Looks to me like this one is better established. The dominants are better established. Yeah. Well, they've had a little longer to do. I think those dominants are, are claiming their ground pretty fast there. Yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I like stands like this because this is, you know, this is where we're trying to get. And what we're often trying to do with a pre-commercial, to be able to come in here, get to a commercial thinning at age 30 to 40, where you have not every tree with a deep crown, but plenty of trees that have enough crown. And a landowner can really make a lot of decisions. You have a lot of, this is where you put your, your mark on the stand for the next 30 years. It, mm. it doesn't have to be uh, a very regimented one. You can be making a prescription that allows you to keep, favor, whichever hardwoods. Yeah. Um, you can open it up more to let a little more light in in the understory if you want to give a flush of growth or you can keep it real tight if you're willing to come back for multiple thinnings and are favoring, um, are favoring timber production. So this is really, I think, the opportunity that landowners ought to be looking for because your stand is developed in a way, you've been watching it, it's developed in a way where you have a lot of choices here in a stand like this. It's not gonna be a super profitable harvest probably, but there's plenty to take out and a lot of good looking trees to leave, I think. Yeah.